Well, if you think you're not racist, you could be right. But in this day and age, that's simply not good enough. What I did wrong in 2016 is I overestimated white people. The biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right, uh, to the right. Those white guys, those middle-aged, boring, nerdy-looking white guys. And white people have been probably woefully late to this conversation. But I'm not willing to let white voters off the hook. Do you believe that, that, that white folks actually care about ra racial injustice? It doesn't appear that we do. I mean, the status quo of our society is racism, and it's comfortable for white people. Well, because we're white, we have, we have had privilege, even the poorest of us. I sit here as a privileged white woman. I cannot imagine, but I appreciate you educating us. It's very hard to talk about the issue of race. White people particularly don't know how to do it. Well, I call it white mansplaining us. This idea that white people are objective on racism, which is outrageous. We are the least objective. The most dangerous kind of white privilege is to think that we can sit this justice struggle out. It's critical for, for white people, for people uh, in general, to, to stop denying they're, they're racist ideas. That's why it's time to check our bias at the door and lean into the discomfort that is necessary for real change. The heartbeat of racism itself is denial, and the sound of that heartbeat is, I'm not racist. It is incumbent upon people who hold the power in this society to help to do that, to do the heavy lifting. And guess who that is? Who is that, Chris? White people. I don't talk much, but when I do, I make it count.